Hello my friends, Hank here, and today we're going to learn a simple and effective method for painting up Splitter Tarn Mooster, or Splitter Tarn, or Splitter Pattern Camouflage, one of the most widely used camo patterns employed by the German army in World War II. Unlike most other specialty German camouflage from the period, Splitter Tarn was distributed to nearly all regular Wehrmacht units in the form of Zeltbahn Shelter Quarters, which is exactly what we're going to paint today on one of these lovely Tamiya late war infantry figures. These camouflage Zeltbahn shelter quarters can be attached together to make a suitable rain poncho to help protect its wearer from the elements, and that is exactly what we're going to see demonstrated on these figures today. So without further ado, let's hop over to the bench and get right into it. Now before we start here, I've gone ahead and painted up all the other uniform bits on this figure. If you'd like to check out one of my full step-by-step -step German infantry figure tutorials, I'll link to one right here, but for today's session we're going to just focus on our camo. I've already laid down the primary base layer for our splitter tarn, which is this German camo beige, and that's going to go all over the surface of our Zeltbahn poncho. Once our base beige color is on there, we're going to start up with our first camo color. Using some German camo medium brown, we're going to draw in some squiggly zigzagged polygons. It's a great idea to have a reference image available for inspiration, but two key things to keep in mind here. A. Keep some neutral space between your shapes. We don't want too much overcrowding. And B, Splitter Tarn Camo is made up of all sorts of sharp edges, so try to blot these in in tight, irregular angles. Now at this scale, it's really difficult to get crisp, sharp edged lines, but that is okay. As long as we achieve the proper spacing and general pattern effect here, this guy is going to look great in 135 scale. Sure, our camo isn't going to be exactly accurate, but this is more than acceptable for creating some really nice looking 135 scale figures without stressing yourself out. Alright, so now we've got all our camo brown on there, and he's looking pretty good already. Our next step will be to take some Luftwaffe camo green and start making our smaller green polygons. As you'll note in the reference photo, our green polygons are much smaller than their brown counterparts, so keep that in mind as you work here. I think of these almost as little sharp edged beans here and there. Be sure that each one of your little green beans touch some brown just a bit. They can either sit right on top of a brown camo section, or they can overlap a little bit, but they're always in contact with the brown camo, so they don't free float on the beige background on their own. Alright, so next is the hardest part, even in this simplified method of creating splitter tarn. One of the defining features of this pattern are the little raindrop lines that speckle the beige background. For this, I recommend loading up your finest tip brush with some German camo dark green and very gently drawing in some tiny, tiny hash marks. Now I'll admit, my effort here is too large. I've seen some expert figure painters on YouTube really nail these raindrops, but as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a simplified method that anybody can practice to create some really great looking figures. Once you're happy with your raindrops, it's time to move on to weathering. As always, we're going to start by spraying our whole figure with a coat of gloss varnish to seal and protect our work thus far. And once that clear coat is dried, we're going to hit our figure with our trusty sludge wash technique using some enamel dark wash. Get this all over our figure. I know, he's going to look really messy at first, but that is part of the process. Once we've got our wash on there, we're going to take some enamel odorless thinner and start to remove the excess wash from our figure. The thinner is going to help our wash flow into all the nooks and crannies and recesses of this lovely little figure sculpt here and create some wonderful artificial shadows. It also gives our infantrymen here a nice little bit of grime, which is key. Keep working along the figure trying to remove any excess dark wash from the raised areas of the sculpt until you are happy with the result. And once our dark wash is dried completely, you can see what a nice effect that gives us. All we've got to do now is spray our whole figure with a matte varnish clear coat to seal in our work and knock down any excess shininess. And just like that, our camo's looking pretty great. To wrap up here though, let's mount our trooper's STG44 that we painted up in a previous video in place on his back using a little super glue. And voila! You've got yourself a 135 scale Wehrmacht figure adorned with a realistic Splittertarnmuster Zeltbahn poncho. Now, you might notice, our fella's Panzerfaust here is in need of some love. Why don't we paint and decal that up in our next episode? Be sure to subscribe right here to Spruce and Brews Scale Modeling so you don't miss out on any of the scale modeling action. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.